Lately, I've been asked about what kind of case do I have on my phone? What kind of screen protector is that? Where can I get that wallpaper from? What exactly is on your phone? Well, I'm gonna answer all that in this video with what's on my Galaxy S9 Plus. To start this off, for protection, I'm rocking a Samsung HyperNet case while I'm waiting on my colorware scans. For screen protection, I'm using the Whitestone Dome Screen Protector, which I gotta say is really, really nice. Once you get past the intimidation of installing it, you're really gonna enjoy it, trust me. It's just a little bit on the pricier side, but hey, if you want the best, you gotta pay for the best. It's simple supply and demand facts. Diving into the phone now, for my launcher, I'm using the Pixel 2 launcher, which I'll link all of this stuff down below. Now I'm expecting somebody to say, if you want your phone to look like a Pixel so bad, why didn't you just buy a Pixel? I could answer your question with the question and ask, if you didn't wanna see what I had on my phone, why did you click on this video? But instead, I'll keep it civil and just simply say that it's the display, it's the hardware, it's the 4K 60 frames per second, it's the 960 frames per second in 720p, Samsung Pay. Heck, I wasn't gonna say it, but it's even the headphone jack. To go along with the Pixel Launcher, I have the Google Wallpapers app installed, as well as the Live Wallpapers APK installed. Now, if I'm being completely honest, I did put the live animated wallpaper on here just for this video, but I do use them from time to time, so don't judge me. I'm also using the Pixel Full Icon Pack in conjunction with the Android O Samsung theme. You might notice this little widget here at the top and automatically assume that it's the Google Aware widget that comes with the Pixel Launcher. Wrong. It's called another widget and it replicates the look of the Google Aware widget while offering the same exact functionality. Where it's better is the customization that you can do to make it look better like adjust the font size and color. Plus, it is free and you can't beat free. I mean, you can't beat the free. Now I'm a bit boring when it comes to Android home screens and always set up my phones exactly the same with two folders, the Google and social bunch. For photo editing, I use two apps and the first of which is actually right there and it's Snapseed. Pretty much the most feature rich, useful free photo editing app that you can get on iOS or Android. I've also been using the new Google task app for reminders and lists and also the files go app to send files to other phones. It's kind of cool, but it doesn't fix my airdrop need, but you know, whatever. My social folder is kind of boring since I use all stock apps. It's not that I don't like third-party apps, Twitter clients in specific. I just find that with all the battery drainage, the notification limitations, or the inability to send pictures through private messages always leaves me going back to the stock app anyways. So I just figure I'll use that. I know, I know. It sucks. On the bottom here, everything might look normal, but I'm actually using the Pixel Dialer app which works great. I just wish they would implement the voicemail tab that's actually on the Pixel. I'm also using Android Messages for my SMS client. Now, let me just say that as a long time Textra user, I understand that there's better SMS clients out there, but Android Messages supports RCS and RCS supports the ability to send full res files, such as higher resolution images and video, through your texting application. Of course, it all comes down to your carrier and whether or not the other person is using a SMS client that supports RCS as well. And of course their carrier, it's gonna be similar to iMessage, but more open sourced. My email app of choice is and will probably always be Newton mostly because they gave me a free lifetime subscription back in the day. But I was a Newton user before it was called Newton and it was referred to as Cloud Magic and it was a free email application. If you do a lot of emailing, it's definitely beneficial, but it is on the pricier side. Me personally, I just like the fact that it syncs all of my accounts and all of my signatures, and I only gotta remember one login every single time I switch devices. So to me, that's pretty cool. On my Ed screen, I have some apps that I use all the time, such as Amazon, b and Photo, Spotify, OneNote, Docs, all that good stuff. I also have contacts and screen capture tools over here. Oh yeah, and um, I'm using the stock camera app, the, you know, the one that came with my S9 and S9 Plus, mostly because I wanna get the most out of my camera. Like if I wanna be able to switch apertures or use the manual controls, the AR mode, the 4K60 or the 720p at 960, all of that is pretty much isolated to the stock camera app. Plus, I tried to install the Pixel APK and it just lags and shuts down my phone. I'm using the newest APK and I tried to use an older one and I got the same results. I think it's because I have a Snapdragon version and I don't know, with my model, it's just not working. Moving on into the app drawer, I have Evernote installed, but I actually never use it since I use OneNote. 
For news, I was using Feedly, but I recently switched to Flipboard. They're pretty much exactly the same, just have a different look to them. Now, uh, personally, I like Feedly better, but it's kind of buggy for me. You can see the Gboard app right there, and yes, I'm using that as my primary keyboard. I do switch back to the Samsung keyboard every once in a while, but mostly I just use Gboard. Of course, I do have some smart home stuff on here like Hue, LifeX, Rain. I'm not sure why the Nest app isn't installed yet, but I will be doing that right now. Oh. Remember when I said that Snapseed was just one of my photo editing apps? Well, my second is Lightroom, which to get the most out of, you do need a subscription, but man, it's awesome since it keeps all of my photos in cloud storage. Good stuff. Almost forgot about LastPass, which is on every phone, tablet, laptop, and desktop that I own. It just helps me manage passwords easier. The sneakers and stock X apps are shoe apps that I rarely use, but I look from time to time. Plus, I uh, kinda got a neighbor that's a little bit obsessed and he has me participate in these shoe drops all the time. Ticketmaster is something new for me and my phones, but yeah, it's self-explanatory. I'm just trying to get out more and do stuff. Some more awesome wallpapers I use all the time are from Wally -E and Walpy. Both of these are unique in their own way. Wally -E gives you more retro style artistic Photoshop images and Walpy -E is more about variety in categories. Both are great and you shouldn't have any issue finding any wallpaper that you want from either one of these, plus they're free. But um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I know I'm a little bit of a boring dude when it comes to my phone, but hey, I like the minimalistic approach. I like the simplicity of it. Plus, I just started using this phone two weeks ago again as my daily driver, so you gotta give me some, some slack there. And speaking of that, I'm gonna have that full review coming very soon. And if you don't wanna miss that, you're gonna wanna subscribe. Make sure you turn on those notifications and leave me a comment down below with what you wanna see out of that full review. And of course, follow me on social, because you never know. I'm pretty sure I got a giveaway coming up in the future, and you don't want to miss that. You definitely want to be a part of that. It's going to be linked to social, so go ahead and get a head start. Hit me up on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all of that good stuff. All of those links are in the description. Just go ahead and give yourself that head start. And of course, I'll talk to you guys in the next video.